much. David Faber has been covering this ever since the block trades really hit late last week, and he joins us this morning on the phone. David, uh, happy vacation once again. <laughs> uh, what do we? What's the important to know this morning? Yeah, it, thanks, guys. I'm sorry I'm not with you, and it does seem inevitable. First vacation in eight months. It always happens. <laughs> uh, and, you know, it's funny. Literally on the plane, 7 a.m., my phone started to light up with uh, calls from people saying there's some very strange block trades. Now, that wasn't yet Viacom and Discovery, which, of course, as we know, are sort of at the center of this, but it was a, any of these other names. Baidu, you mentioned Tencent. You heard Dom mentioning at the end of, of Squawk Box. Block after block, and people starting to wonder what was going on as Friday went along. Of course, we started to see those enormous blocks of both Discovery and Viacom. We have all three of us sat there and talked endlessly, as you know, over these last few months about the enormous move up in both Viacom and Discovery, in particular two companies that I happen to know very well, far beyond what many at least had anticipated would be the fundamental strength of these companies, even with counting for their success so far, if you want to call it that, in direct-to-consumer. And now we have an answer as to what was going on, but we have an awful lot of questions still in terms of how this was allowed to happen. And if I could just back up for a minute and try to explain to our viewers, what are we talking about? Well, it does appear that Arquegos, this family office slash hedge fund, whatever you want to actually term it, um, had swap agreements across Wall Street with all sorts of different prime brokers, whether it's Go uh, Goldman Sachs, whether it's Morgan Stanley, whether it's uh, Credit Suisse, which, as Jim just mentioned, may have significant losses, whether it's Nomura, and on and on. And none of them seem to have an understanding of exactly how large the positions were at the other firms. And a swap basically gives a derivative. The, the, the stock is held in the street name. But the derivative that's tied to it gives the economic value to the owner there. And so Arquegos had, well, now we know perhaps as much as 15 percent or more ownership uh, economically of Discovery and Viacom. Those numbers are just astronomic. And apparently buying them all through, the main reason we, they may have moved up to the levels that they did, and then having been thrown as Viacom proceeded to do that offering early last week, at $85 a share and the stock suffering, that may have started this cascade where the selling began. And by the way, it's not just owning it on swap where there's no transparency and nobody at any nobody really knows, including the companies, who their true owners are. It's also the leverage being provided by the prime brokers, Jim, five, maybe as much as seven times. And that's where we are right now. And this may not be over. I've heard from numerous people this morning that Wells Fargo may be shopping a large block of Viacom as well. And so we'll see. They did the $45 million last night at, what was it, 47 I think it was. But there may be more downside here. We'll have to wait and see. But this has been a fascinating story, Jim, both from the lack of transparency, the leverage that was being used, and the size. Nobody knows exactly what this guy who runs Arquegos was thinking. It, well, it, it seems almost insane, his behavior. Yeah, I mean, David, when I think about this, I think about what would have happened if you had done, I mean, let's say I ran a hedge fund and you borrowed money and you didn't tell the other brokers that you were doing this and you just had everybody on the hook. Uh, so I think people at home, David, are wondering, how is it possible that this man could have fooled every single broker? Yeah, listen, there are, you know, you are supposed to uh, uh, say that you don't will not own more than 10 percent of any one company, period. Apparently, he didn't listen to those rules and didn't obey those rules. I mean, that's all I can think. Now, there are various rules as well, but, you know, the swap market perhaps is more opaque, as we've said. Uh, you, it's unknown to the other prime brokers, if you don't disclose it, what your economic position is with others. And so clearly he seemed to be above 10 percent. Clearly he, well, he very well may not have been obeying rules at least set by the prime brokers, Jim. Uh, and then why he would make the decision to buy and buy and buy over those last weeks and months as that stock went ever higher and many shorts covered, it's not clear exactly what his thinking was. Well, um, and here we are. Well, David, I mean, I think people at home are trying to figure out how a $3 billion offering of Viacom, which, by the way, you talked about Viacom doing one every day if they, were, if they had a brain. How $3 billion Viacom could send everything domino-like that you could actually have the language of a credit suite saying, look, you know, we are, these are highly significant losses. David, these are very big banks. I mean, I, I think people say, are they all that fragile? I know. I mean, listen, it's prime brokerage. Certain ones are much more focused on the leverage that they're providing a client. But at the same time, if the client is not being straightforward with them and they don't understand the exposure the client has 
across Wall Street to one name or two names and how large they are in that name, it's very difficult for them to ascertain. And again, it's, it's both the lack of transparency and the leverage here that conspired to, to bring this, this, uh, this firm down, clearly, uh, and is going to result in these enormous losses that we're seeing. I mean, the moral last night, we saw, what, as much as $2 billion. We don't know the number on Credit Suisse. We have other suspects that perhaps were – that there's some concern about. So we're going to learn a lot more. There's going to be – guys, going to have to be an investigation here of some kind. Most likely there is going to be a rewriting of, of, of rules and regulations around swaps so that there is more transparency. Um, you know, that's why this is an important story even if it doesn't spread far beyond. And obviously, it's already impacted the stocks that we're talking about. It's not as though Tencent Jim is not an enormous company. The idea that that stock was down as much as it was is frightening, given how important it is in China and how enormous it is in China. Shepard Smith here. Thanks for watching CNBC on YouTube.